Happy. It is a miracle. Here's the reason for the joy. President Jean-Claude Duvalier driving himself and his wife to the airport last night to go into exile. On the darkened tarmac, a U.S. Air Force jet was waiting. That was it. Quick, abrupt, no ceremony. The so-called President for Life was replaced by a six-man council of state. It's headed by General Henri Namphy, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Among the two civilians on the council is Gerard Gourg, the director of the Human Rights Association and a severe critic of abuses by the former president's private army, the so-called Tonton Makut. <laughs> Out on the streets, there was quick evidence of the people's hatred for the Tonton Makut. The mood turned ugly as rioters attacked property they thought belonged to the Makut, a word that means bogeyman in Creole. Police counterattacked, and when looters tried to get into a car dealership, they opened fire, leaving at least two people dead. The new government immediately imposed a 2 p.m. curfew in the capital. The question now facing Haiti is whether the new government will be able to hang together. After 28 years of domination by one family, the people of Haiti have little experience in running their own affairs. As the people danced in the streets today, the new ruling council was saying it had no long-term political ambitions. But there were few details on how democracy might be made to work here. That didn't seem to matter for the moment. It was enough that the hated dictator was gone. Peter Collins, ABC News, Haiti. This is Jean Meserve. With Duvalier's downfall, demonstrations of joy erupted in Miami's little Haiti neighborhood, where some 50,000 Haitian immigrants live. From now on, we want a government, a democratized government, who is going to respect the people of Haiti. In Boston, outside the Haitian consulate, men and women who had fled Duvalier burned a Haitian flag and smashed pictures of the man who just yesterday called himself President for Life. Official Washington was also pleased. We believe that the Duvalier decision was the correct one. Duvalier's was a repressive and corrupt regime. While the president lived in fabulous wealth, most of his people existed in poverty. Though Washington was alarmed by the deteriorating situation there, State Department officials insist the U.S. did not orchestrate today's events, but it clearly influenced them. By cutting off $26 million in badly needed U.S. aid, the U.S. signaled to Duvalier that his time was through. And while the U.S. claims not to have handpicked his successors, American diplomats were active in the negotiations that persuaded Duvalier to leave and allowed the transition of power. The U.S. also has been involved in talks with other nations to find a new home for Duvalier. And the U.S. did not hesitate to provide him transportation out of Haiti. He seemed to feel he could no longer maintain order, and we thought the best contribution to that uh, maintaining order was to help take him out, which we did. The U.S. is anxious to see democracy take root in Haiti and to see the human rights situation improve. And it has a powerful carrot to advance its point of view, U.S. aid. The same aid that, when withheld, contributed to Duvalier's demise. Jean Meserve, ABC News, the State Department. After months of violent protest, Duvalier fled the country this morning aboard a U.S. Air Force plane for a temporary stay in France. Enthusiastic crowds in the capital became rampaging mobs that looted the tomb of Duvalier's father, Papa Doc. U.S. government sources say the United States indirectly pressured Duvalier to leave through contact with influential Haitians. We believe that the Duvalier decision was the correct one. The Haitian people have remained peaceful. They're expected to last for several days. In Boston, demonstrations began peacefully, but later a mob ransacked the Haitian embassy. Many Haitians in this country are expected to return to their homeland now. Jeannie Mose reports from New York. A rhythmic beat came from beneath a Civil War monument in snowbound Brooklyn, and celebrating Haitians talked of being bound for home. As soon as possible, I want to go. I'll be proud to go back there and to see people chanting on the street, welcoming all of those children who have been missing for so long. Eddie Dubiton has been missing Haiti for 19 years. He and thousands of other Haitians settled in Brooklyn but remained on hold. We have not been building a life. We were compelled to stay in the United States. 
They miss their culture and their climate. And now that the political climate in Haiti has changed, almost every Haitian we talked to spoke of going home, though they were less definite about exactly what they would do once they got there. I think I'm going to sell my care in my house to go back home. And what are you going to do down in Haiti? I got plenty of things to do. Most said they would wait to see how the new government works, and social worker Eddie Dubiton has two kids and a wife to consider. She's a little more nervous because she's concerned about the kids. The kids, they were born in the United States, and they have friends. They don't know too much about Haiti. But for most who were born there, the dream of returning has never died. Her bloodshed in Haiti. CNN's Carol Week has more from the White House. President Reagan gave the go-ahead for an Air Force C-141 transport to evacuate Duvalier and about two dozen others from Haiti. But the president says the U.S. did not force Baby Doc out. No, we're, no, we're wa watching and hoping, uh, waiting for them to develop something now that will restore order. The decision to leave Haiti was Duvalier's. It became obvious to him in the last few days that he could no longer sustain his government except through the use of force. Administration officials say Duvalier asked the French ambassador in Haiti for assistance out of the country on Thursday, with both France and Duvalier then turning to the U.S. to provide safe transportation. We were simply helping uh, his, his request, the re at the request of the French government, to try to preserve order um, uh, in the country in a situation which, is, as he described it, uh, it was getting very difficult to preserve order. We like to uh, avoid bloodshed and, and keep a stable situation. But State Department sources say the U.S. did indirectly directly pressure Duvalier to leave by passing that message through other Haitian leaders. U.S. government sources also say on Wednesday, an emissary of Jamaican Prime Minister Edward Siaga urged Duvalier to get out. On Capitol Hill, there was little uh, regret over Duvalier's departure, but some lawmakers were them. concerned about the U.S. role. I'm glad he's out good riddance as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm very interested in finding out uh, what has transpired uh, in the last uh, two or three weeks down there uh, that uh, apparently led to his uh, abdicating his uh, presidency for life and uh, apparently with some involvement from the American State Department and the American government. White House and State Department officials called Duvalier's decision to leave the right one. The administration says it's still too early to assess the new military and civilian government of Haitian Lieutenant General Henri Nampi and whether that transition government will push forward to Democratic elections. Carol Week, CNN, the White House. Duvalier's departure prompted thousands to dance in the streets of Miami's Haitian community known as Little Haiti. The news broke and the celebrations began before sunrise. By noon, 500 people had jammed the streets. This was the third such celebration in eight days. The first two times, the parties were premature erupting amid rumors that Duvalier had been gone. 50 to 100,000 Haitians live in Miami. Many in the crowd today said they would return to Haiti now that du Duvalier is gone. City officials